Hello everyone and welcome back. So this should be the very last video in this session of R&D videos for the custom terrain system. In this video, Lee, you've got uh, written down simple debug consoles. What do you have planned? Well, we've already started with it a little bit, if I can bring my cursor back around. And um, Let me get you over there. Yep, if you could please, thank you. Mm -hmm. We've already started with the debug text, which is in the center of our screen. Mm -hmm. So if I put this here so we can see it. So there's a couple of things that I want to do with this, though. We're going to be using this uh, debug text for our simple council or, you know, debug council. So is the council going to be, is it going to be an actual console or? Not by the end of this video, it won't be. Okay. At some point in time, it probably will, but it's displaying information. Okay. So, so. it's more like um, debug display. Yeah, debug okay. info. That's good. Don't get semantic with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quiet. Continue. Uh, see, now you derailed my whole train of thought, here, and now I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, anchor. We want our text anchor to be in the lower left. No, nope. is it upper left? No, it should be lower left. And alignment to the left. So... And our pixel offset, we're going to fix inside of code. Now, basically, this is going to be our debug info, not our debug console, because we're not typing in it. And, you know, don't want to be corrected again. But we're going to hide it, because we're going to create all of the stuff that it displays inside of a script. Okay. Now, the, the script that we're going to be using is going to be our terrain demo, which I've got hidden away over here. So just scroll down to the very bottom. We're going to make a new private void method called draw debug info. Now inside of here, we want to find our text. If you remember back in game manager, we created our game object debug text. We don't need this up here anymore, so I'll get rid of that. But we do have this debug text info here, and we go and look for it. I'm going to go ahead and kill this from here. And I'm going to delete this line from here. Inside of train demo, though, I want to do the same thing again. So inside of awake, I'm going to paste this line of code. And I'm going to make another private game object. And this will be our debug text. So this goes, a, goes ahead and finds it and initializes it. Now inside of here, we need to make sure that our debug text is not null. If for some reason it couldn't find it or the game object doesn't exist, we don't want to run this bit of code. We also want to call this information. So before I forget, inside of our update, we'll want to go ahead and call draw debug info. Now inside of here, what we want to do is uh, position our information. To do that, we're going to go debug text dot GUI text dot pixel offset. And that's going to be equal to a new vector two. And we're going to subtract our screen width. So screen dot width divided by two plus ten. So this is going to get half of our screen width, subtract it from the center of the screen, add ten to it to make sure that we're ten pixels off the uh, left side of the screen. 
also going to do the same thing. So we're going to subtract screen height divided by 2 plus 10. So this is going to position that um, GUI text in the lower left-hand corner of our screen. Create a uh, another variable called position. We're going to look for our character's position. So we'll go TP controller instance transform dot position. We want to create another variable called uh, time span. And this is going to be a time span from seconds. And we're going to get time. We're going to look for time since level load. So this will be the number of seconds since our level has been loaded and converted into a time span. Create another variable called text. Now this one's going to get a bit long, so I'm going to have to break this up. So we're going to get string dot format and Apparently my wife doesn't realize that I'm recording because she's making all kinds of noise in the other room. <laughs> so if you're hearing that, I apologize. I will chastise her later, and then I will probably get smacked. But uh, that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our positional information. So I oh, forgot. Yeah, okay, so I've got zero. Our zero is going to be our frame per second counter. We're going to have a new line, then we're going to get our position. Our position is going to be broken up in a way that we're only going to keep one um, decimal place after our position instead of having the full position of the float. So we'll do one colon F1. And I'm getting in it error, probably because I didn't put this whole thing in quotation marks. So let's put this in quotation marks and keep it happy for the moment. All right, so our first uh, X will be kept to one precision. Two will hold Y. Again, F1, comma, three. Now the dog wants to join in. Got to love it. So there's three colon F1. So that will be our Z position. We'll start a new line. And actually, just to keep everything kind of consistent with what's going on, I can break it up this way. No, I can't. What am I thinking? Um, wow. Wrong button. can't split it up that way just because of the way things work. My apologies. All right, next we have to hold time. So our time is going to be held using um, two decimal places. And we want to pad them out so they're holding two places. So if we have one hour, it would be displayed as zero one. Two hours would be displayed as zero two, etc. So our first one will be hour followed by colon five is again two displacement or two. Uh, placeholders that will be minutes followed by six which again d2 this will be our seconds so we're going to hold hours minutes and seconds and if you want to do crazy tests like I do with letting it run over uh, um, 24 hours you want to put days in here because hours will just wrap at 24 and start over with one again. Mm -hmm. So 
but I don't expect most people are going to be crazy enough to let it run for over a day. And let's see, that'll be good for now, so I won't need to use the new line here. So now we need to put in our data that we're going to be using. Come on. Alright, so our first one is going to be FPS counter dot FPS followed by position dot X or POS dot X POS Y POS Z so that gives us all of our positions broken up then we need time span dot hours followed by time span dot minutes and time span dot seconds so that should be enough if I build it no errors if we go over and run it we can close this for now and text is never used so not quite done yet because as Unity was so kind to tell me that I probably need to go ahead and tell debug text dot GUI text dot text equals text because while I've done all the calculations and printed up this nice little text string formatted it up got it ready to go I didn't assign it to the GUI text so it's not going to display so that's what that does and hit play And there you go. Yep. So we've got our frames uh, per second. We've got our position with a single decimal place. And we've got a little counter or a little running counter of what's going on. Okay. So what you thinking? Um, I was just thinking if there was anything else that I wanted to put on there. I mean... On mine, I do have a couple of little cool features, but I don't know if we really need to have them. We've got a patch loaded count here. So if you look at this counter and we go into our train patch, where we create our patches, or actually a little bit further down, update mesh. So inside of here, if we wanted to keep track of that information, we could go and uh, update it. So every time we've got an update, when it comes back out, that counter um, gets incremented. So we could go to train demo and go to our handle train updates. And Okay, so if train patch update actually happens and it loads that uh, patch, yeah, our patch load counter is incrementing good. I wanted to make sure that was happening. So we could come down here and we could add another new line and we could put in um, patches loaded. Here we could. Why do you want to go ahead and put in the uh, your brace of seven? Yeah, I'll have to do that. So that I'll get that in there. So build that out. So back over.
So then if you run to where it's going to queue up a, few, a new row of uh, patches, that counter should go up. So anybody that's been listening to the radio shows or uh, some of the classes when I was rattling off how far in the world I went or how long I was going in the world or how many patches was loaded during that session, this is how I was able to tell all that information. Very cool. It works. It's yeah. mm-hmm. nothing fancy, and it's not a console yet. Okay, okay. I was just asking because that's what you had written down. But I guess that's everything for session three. Um, unless we, you know, decide to come back and do a couple of addendums like we did with session two. True. But outside but, of that, that should. But be I'm it. pretty sure there should be it for uh, this one. Okay. Very cool. Well, Lee, as always, thank you very much for your time. And everyone out there watching the videos, thank you very much as well. And that will conclude session three of Lee's R&D with the new custom train system. Thanks a lot, everyone.